From Washington, this is VOA News. Coming up, the latest on the crisis in northern Iraq, Chinese accusing U.S. of inflaming tensions in South China Sea. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Norman. British Prime Minister David Cameron says an international plan is being developed to rescue thousands of Yazidis and other religious minorities trapped by Islamic State fighters on a mountaintop in northern Iraq. Mr. Cameron cut short a vacation Wednesday to return to London to meet with advisors on the humanitarian crisis unfolding on Iraq's Mount Sinjar. He rejected demands by some British lawmakers to intervene militarily in Iraq, but said Britain would play a role in the rescue plan just as it has already with the United States in dropping food and water to the refugees some of whom have died in the extreme heat. Well, clearly there is an absolutely desperate situation in Iraq, particularly on this mountainside. I'm proud of the fact that British aeroplanes and British aid have been playing a role and will continue to play a role to help these people. But we need a plan to get these people off that mountain and get them to a place of safety. And I can confirm that detailed plans are now being put in place and are underway and that Britain will play a, a role in delivering them. Also Wednesday, several hundred displaced Shasidis demonstrated in the northern Kurdish city of Duak, calling for the world to help them leave Iraq for Europe. Israeli military says it has carried out airstrikes in the Gaza Strip in response to Palestinian rocket fire. Military said early Thursday it targeted terror sites in Gaza, said at least three rockets were fired into Israel shortly before a 72-hour ceasefire between Israel and Hamas expired late Wednesday. This comes as Egyptian and Palestinian officials said Hamas agreed to extend the 72-hour truce with Israel for five days. A Palestinian negotiator said officials hope to reach a final agreement in the coming weeks that has full Arab, regional, and international support. Israeli officials declined comment on the extension. A Russian aid convoy moving toward rebel-held eastern Ukraine stalled Wednesday in Russian territory north of the Ukraine border city of Luhansk. Ukraine officials have been issued conflicting statements about whether the convoy would be permitted to enter Ukrainian territory where troops from Ukraine are battling pro-Russia separatists for control of the border region. Nigeria's president on Wednesday reassured citizens of his government's commitment towards containing the spread of the Ebola virus despite the country's recording its third death. During an emergency meeting with state governors and health officials, President Goodluck Jonathan emphasized the need for all to unite in overcoming the disease. Nigeria's Information Minister, Lamara Maku, spoke about the number of Ebola cases in Nigeria. The number of people that have been traced is 198. Now, out of this number, 177 are in Lagos, and they have been traced, some are in quarantine, some are being monitored by health specialists, uh, their movements, you know, being monitored, and uh, uh, they are under directive from the Ministry of Health. Ebola has killed more than 1,000 people in Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone in the world's worst outbreak of the disease and the World Health Organization has called it an international emergency. Chinese state media accused the United States of inflaming tensions in the South China Sea. Shannon Van Zant has details. Both China and the United States have lodged accusations over actions in the South China Sea, which is contested by China and several other Asian nations. China's state-run People's Daily newspaper said the United States was emboldening its Asian neighbors in claims to the waterway, which is rich in natural resources and one of the busiest shipping routes in Asia. 
The People's Daily, the mouthpiece of the Communist Party, said the U.S. position is making the Philippines confident of winning the South China Sea dispute. The U.S. State Department says it is calling for a de-escalation of tensions and the timely negotiation of a meaningful code of conduct for countries' actions in the South China Sea. Shannon Van Sant, Beijing. A plane crash in Brazil that killed Socialist Party presidential candidate Eduardo Campos and six others has thrown the country's scheduled October 5th presidential election into turmoil. Observers say Campos's running mate, former Environment Minister Marina Silva, could enter the race in the next 10 days under Brazilian law. That's the latest world news from BOA.